Hi, thank you for tuning in with me. My name is Bas. Today we're going to do some finite difference groundwater modeling in Excel. Um, you can apply this to any other form of flow, um, heat fluxes, uh, electrical currents, they're all very similar. Um, but today we're going to uh, constrain ourselves a little bit. Um, in the next five minutes we're going to model the groundwater level of uh, polder with fixed water levels on either side and we have some rainfall coming from the top. It's a simple example but uh, I hope that you can agree with me after watching this video that the possibilities are huge. Um, over here we have a, uh, a top view of our polder um, with canals on either side of them with a fixed water level and it stretches all the way up north and all the way down south but we're going to focus ourselves on this little cross-section, this black line in the middle. Um, we're going to uh, yeah, uh, schematize our polder as follows. So we have uh, rainfall coming from the top with uh, rate N. We have a fixed water level on the left side, uh, H1, and a fixed water level on the right side, H2, and the width of the polder is called L. Furthermore, the um, the height of the polder, the, the area through which the water flows, is called A. And yeah, we have we're going to calculate the the water level through uh, yeah in this polder. We're going to find a differencing, so that means we're going to schema to uh, to discretize our polder um, in different cells, and then. To each of these cells, we're going to apply a, a simple water balance. Um, yeah, what goes into a cell must come out of a cell, and thereby we're going to neglect a change in storage within that cell over time. So we have in our cells we have um, a flux coming from the left side, a flux coming from the right side, and we're uh, and we have that infiltration on the top. In groundwater flow, we have this simple relation between um, a flux, um, we have an area through which the water flows, and a uh, hydrological conductivity called A, and we have a difference in, um, in potential in head, um, uh, yeah, the spatial derivative of that. So we're going to discretize this. Uh, we have that flux on the left side, which is a function from the water level on the function of the water level on the left cell uh, minus the water level in the cell we're going to calculate. Uh, delta x is the difference in uh, in distance between the centers of the two cells, and we do this for this for both the left side and the right side. If we put these two equations back into our um, water balance, uh, we can derive the following equation. Um, yeah, so we have the, um, it's a function of the, the water level in the cell of the on the left, a water, uh, function of uh, the water level in the cell to the right, um, and we have that infiltration uh, on top of our cell. So let's now put this into Excel and see what happens. Okay, I open Excel. Um, over here we have the formula we derived earlier um, with our different variables. We have the width of the polder, hydraulic conductivity of two, some typical values are these, the cross-sectional area, the fixed water hats on either side, and we have the infiltration rate, the two millimeters per day. The, we, we discretize it in uh, 21 cells of each 10 meters wide um, and I already defined the index so it ranged from 1 to 21 and on the x-axis where the center of the cell is um, yeah so it ranged from 0 to 200 for the first cell we know the water level is a fixed uh, fixed hat but for a second cell we need to calculate it using our derived formula uh, so that would be the water level on the cell to the left plus one cell to the right divided by two uh, plus the infiltration term um, so we divide this by two times the hydraulic conductivity times the height of the 
aquifer, the, the polder. And we copy this to all the cells. And we can see, already see this goes a bit. This doesn't work that nicely. And for the last cell, we have our fixed water head again. That would be H2. Um, but this goes wrong since one cell refers to the uh, next cell and that cell refers back vice versa and they depend on each other's value. We call this circular referencing. Um, but that circular referencing um, we can solve that using our um, iterative solver which is already built in in Excel. So we go to settings to the formula tab and we can make use of this iterative solver. It tries a value and uh, see uh, how the other values are changing and finds an optimal value within the default ranges uh, yeah within the threshold but since uh, I just turned the feature on it doesn't work correctly so we need to copy the cells again and what we now have are the correct values for the water heads but we have uh, in the different cells and it looks quite good and we can plot this of course and this is a perfect curve and it fits an analytical solution within a centimeter. You can even further discretize it if you'd like.